Jeremiah chapter number 40. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. After Niebuhr Zidan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him, being in bonds and chains, among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judah, which were carried away captive in Babylon. We're picking up from chapter 39. Jerusalem is gone, is destroyed. Jeremiah was in jail. He's let loose by the Babylonian army. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, the Lord thy God has pronounced this evil upon this place. Now look at that. Here's a heathen that walks up to Jeremiah and says, You know, you smell that? You smell that the flames? You smell the, 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 the flesh of people burning? You smell the wood burning? You smell that? That is because you defiled your God. Now, I don't know if you ever had, but I've had in my life, I've had someone unsaved come up to me and rebuke me. And I tell you, it don't feel good. Man, you want to kick in your pride, but you have someone who's lost and rebuke you. Now, Jeremiah is not, I'm not saying he's done wrong. I'm just using it as an illustration that sometimes God will use the unsaved. This guy is backing up what Jeremiah said. It's been saying for 38 chapters. 39, it's already happened. 39, Jeremiah is a true prophet of the Lord. 40, God's only confirming, Jeremiah, you've done right. And I'm going to use a heathen man to say it to you. He ain't going to hear it from his own people. They rejected him. Now the Lord has brought it and done according as he has said, which he's been saying through Jeremiah. Because ye, that's all the Jews, have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice. Therefore this thing is to come upon you. So Jeremiah's prophet is true. Deuteronomy 18.22, he is a prophet of the Lord. Everything has been fulfilled. It's amazing how the heathen knew, and yet the people of God didn't know. And now, behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were, in, which were upon thy hand. So he's in jail with chains on. And they're let loose. Peter had chains, and they were let loose. It is, if it seemed good unto thee to come with me into Babylon, come. Now I will look well to thee. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee, whether it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. And it's God through this man says, Jeremiah, you go wherever you go. You go to Babylon, I'll take care of you. You want to stay here in the land? Now that wasn't the order of Jeremiah by God. The order of God to Jeremiah was you, you give yourself over to the king of Babylon. Those that surrender to the king of Babylon are going to live. Those who do not are going to die by war, famine, and pestilence. Jeremiah, it's all over. Okay, Lord, what? You can go back in the land now. It's your choice, your decision up to you now while he was not yet going back he said go back also to Gedaliah the son of Ahiakim the son of Shephan whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the cities of Judah and dwell with him among the people so he turns around and says you know what Jeremiah go back to your land go under this ruler set up by the Babylonian government by uh, King Nebuchadnezzar go into the land And dwell with him among the people, or wheresoever it seems convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals. I want to stop there for a minute. So Jeremiah has been, if you go to Babylon, this uh, Nebuchadnezzar says, I'll take care of you. You come with me to Babylon, I'm going to Babylon. If you come with me, I'll take care of you. Then he says, turn around, he says, listen, if you want to go back to the land, you go to Gedaliah. In Judah, and he'll take care of you. Wherever you go, you got somebody taking care of you. And gave him victual, food, supplies. The Babylonian army had food. It was a city that did. Jeremiah was on his last bread. 
and a reward. Look at that. Don't tell me God doesn't reward you for being faithful. God used this heathen to pay Jeremiah for his service. And let him go with freedom. You figure freedom was just enough. But God is not going to not reward you for not doing what he told you to do. You figure Jeremiah being alive was well enough, but God says, I'm going to give you a reward. Then went Jeremiah unto Gedaliah, the son of Hyakim, to Mizpah. So he stays in the land and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. So Jeremiah doesn't go to Babylon. So he doesn't run into Daniel. He doesn't run into Ezra, Nehemiah. He stays in the land. But he's going to be moving around in a few minutes, a few chapters. Now when all the captains of the forces which were in the field, even they that, and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah the son of Hyakim governor in the land, and had committed unto him men and women and children, and of the poor of the land, of them that were not carried away captive to Babylon. So these are the rejects. We're not going to waste our time with these people to bring them to Babylon. Just leave them here. They're so poor, they, and they're not going to do us anything. Let them survive in the land. Let them take care of themselves. We'll just set a ruler over them. I mean, if that were to happen to America today, the, the ruler here would say, just leave the immigrants. Take those that, that profess to be Americans and profess to be patriots. If they're really strong, you kill them, and you know they really batten down. You bring them to our home country, and we'll give them new instructions. We will reinforce them as non-Americans. All the other people, just you know, they just want to live. Let them live. See, they killed all those that stayed in the land because they were strong, they were mighty, they were. We are victors. You know, the first people that, if this country would be taken over, the first people that would die in the name of patriotism would be the patriots. But God told them, say, go. Get out of the land. And those patriots of Judah may have been strong for the nation, but they were against God. Then, then they came to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nazayim. Now here's one of the people that comes back into the land, and Johanan and jo Jonathan, the son of Kareah, and Sariah, the son of Tenahumoth, and the sons of Ephi, the Nethophite, what a name, and Jezehiah, the son of Machilithite, they and their men. Okay, these are men that, go, that come to Mizpah, to the ruler of Judah, under Babylon. Now, these names are going to come up later. And Gedaliah, the son of Ahikin, the son of Shaphan, swear unto them and to their men, saying, Fear not to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land, which is Judah. Serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. Now, what charge is that? What, what? Stay in the land. We are the authority. We are the rulers. And, you know, we won't hostage you. As for me... Behold, I dwell in Mizpah to serve the Chaldeans. I am on the Babylonian sign. This is Gedaliah, which will come unto us. But ye gather your wine, gather your wine, and your summer fruit, summer fruit, plant, sow, reap, harvest, and oil, and put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that ye have taken. All right. You're under Babylonian control, but go about your business. Now, you may have to pay taxes to the Babylonian government, but everyone's got to pay taxes. The Babylonians are going to make your rules and laws, and yet there are to be rules and laws in any government. Likewise, when all the Jews that were in Moab, does that sound familiar? A bunch of Jews that run away from the land of Israel, I'm talking about the whole land, 
because of problems sword famine pestilence you know of a family that did that and among the Ammonites now those are the two children of Lot cousins I guess you would say something. I don't know family relations but, and Edom that's their brother that's Esau now Edom hates Israel and I believe it's Obadiah that speaks about this hate when 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 the Jews ran from Babylon as we get to the other prophets you're gonna find that Edom stood in the crossways and gathered them up and turn them over to Babylon. I believe that's Obadiah that speaks about that. And they get a cursing from God because I will curse them and curse you. Listen, Edom was not friendly to him, but there were some that escaped to Edom. Edom's that rock city. Do you know about a bunch of Jews are going to be running from a king down south? Isn't that interesting? And that were in all the countries. Heard that the king of Babylon has left a remnant in Judah. That's the poor of the land, verse number 7. And left the remnant of Judah, and that he had set over them Gedaliah, the son of Hyakim, the son of Shaphan. So evidently, this Gedaliah had some kind of name among the people that they knew who this guy was. Or that. Well, there's a Babylonian ruler in the land. The war is over. The battle is over. Death is over as far as from army and occupation. And even though the Jews returned out of their places where they were driven and came into the land of Judah to get a liar unto Mizpah and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. See, God ain't finished with the Jews. Or Jehanan, the son of Kariah, and all the captains of the forces that were in the field came to Gedaliah to Mitzvah. Mitzvah has become the, the Babylonian capital of Judah. And said unto him, Does thou certainly know that Baalus, the king of the Amorites, well, that's the enemy, children of Lot, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to slay thee? But get a liar, the son of a high king, he believed in them not. Yeah. It's a lie. Walks up to the king and says, you know, this guy's going to kill you. And he's been paid for by the Ammonites. Then Jehanan, the son of Kariah, or whatever his name, spoke, uh, spank to get a liar in Mesbeth secretly, saying, let me go, I pray thee, and I will slay Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah. But there is something going on between Ishmael and this and this John Hanna. He's like, "Come here, King. I don't want anybody to hear this. Come here. I'll kill him for you. And no man shall know it. This thing is all. You know, don't you see? There's something wrong right there when it's done in secret." No witnesses. Wherefore should he slay thee, that all the Jews which are gathered unto thee shall be scattered, and the remnant in Judah perish? You know, I'm thinking about the Jews. No, you're not. You're just using them as an excuse. There's something bad blood between Ishmael. And this guy. But Gedaliah, the son of Hyakim, said unto Johanan, the son of Kariah, Korea, whatever, I keep saying the name wrong. Don't think they're going to slap me. Don't think God's going to yell at me for getting their name wrong. We can let you read to the book of Chronicles all the way through and see how well you do. Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. Now, what is Gedaliah's contact here why do you want to meet me privately where no man shall know it 
We've got rules, we got laws, and we got judgment. You can take this thing openly before me and openly before the courts and openly before all the people and say, okay, Ishmael's really going to kill me. He's really been hired. Produce your evidences. Why do you want to do it in secret? You're speaking falsely. If you were not speaking falsely, you would not want to do it in secret. You would say, again, I, I have got proof here. I need some elders. I need some judges. I need somebody to bring this evidence and, and two or three or more people and bring Ishmael here. We need to have a trial. But that's not what's called to be. You have a perversion of justice just by secretly. And how many secret packs are being done by governments today without no one ever knowing? Laws are being passed by secret conference, conference meetings, secret Oval Office meetings, secret Kremlin Office meetings, secret palace meetings, secret going behind all kinds of things in business and boardrooms and, and offices across this world. Where no one else knows, and no one else knows the reason, but behold, the eyes are in, are, behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the good, the evil, and the good. What shows you that there is something wrong here is this guy does not want to do it in the open. And Galilee speaks up and says, "You're a liar," and he calls him a liar. And that's how we leave off this chapter. So we're taking Jeremiah is let loose out of prison. He is confirmed that what he said was true by a heathen, by a Gentile. Would you care to ask Peter and Jonah about that? Jonah said, I'm not going to go. Peter, I want you to go to the Lord, not so I have not touched anything unclean. Neighbor Zedan walks up to Daniel and says, yeah, you know, God caused all this. Jeremiah's made kicking and saying, yeah, I know. That's exactly what I've been saying. Wait a minute. You think Jeremiah's just standing, wait a minute. Um, you Gentile, right? Yeah, me Gentile. Eating a ham sandwich. And you understand what God has done. Yeah. He destroyed you because you guys wouldn't listen to him. Man, how come my people couldn't get it? Remember, he just Jeremiah walking away from this conversation. I mean, he stays in Jerusalem. I mean, he stays in the land of Judah. He goes to the, the Gedaliah in Mizpah. And he just made this. You look around and show that stupid Gentile. Make sure you didn't hear him. That God forsaken heathen. Make sure he's not looking or can hear what he's saying. That guy has got the whole point in one afternoon, and I have been preaching to my people for 37 chapters. 37 chapters long, I have been preaching to those people, and not one person got it. That's the only one that God could send to me to confirm what I've been saying. Because there's, you know, there was a couple times we read that Jeremiah, man, he got perplexed, he got, he got dismayed, he, got, I'm going to quit speaking, and I, Lord. They're calling me a liar. Those prophets are preaching anything but what I'm preaching. And the only person you could send to me to confirm was a Gentile. Wait a minute, Lord. The only one that would come and get me out of the, out of the mire and the mud was a Gentile, Ethiopian. Where were the Jews that helped Jeremiah? A Babylonian man and an Ethiopian man are the only men that ever helped Jeremiah. You know, you may have a stranger help you more than a family man. You may be blood related, but 
I mean, would you think that the Lord thy God has pronounced it? I mean, he says the Lord thy God. He doesn't say my God. But he sure believes what God done. Now the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, has brought it and done according as he has. Here's a guy who believes what God said. Because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice. That what person can you get preaching sin? Here's a guy that walks up to the plate. They're probably outside the prison house. And here's a Gentile talking about prison. I mean, talking about sin outside the prison. He's preaching on the street to Jeremiah. I don't know if anybody's listening. And now behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thy hands. That were put there by the Jews. And I'm going to give you a condition. Here's a condition. Go to Babylon. Or stay. How do you like that one? And then I'm going to give you victuals. I'm going to take care of you. And a reward. And you let him go. And then we read a little bit about this ruler. That's put into be By the Babylonian government. Now, you know what the big stink is? That this guy is Babylonian, Chaldean, put in by a foreign king in a foreign land that's not there. Do you think there's going to be resentment? Do you think, you know, they're not going to like this guy? This is not our people. Yet, yeah, but 600 years later, give or take a year or so more, the Jews are going to cry out and say, we have no king but Caesar. In rejection of God's Messiah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And what we end chapter 40, when something, the events is going to happen more in 41 and 42, it's going to lead to a murder. And what do you learn from it? All have sinned, come short of glory of God. Even as the Jews are now in Babylon, they are now dead. They are now poor. Some are in Babylon. Some are in hell. Some are living up and picking their summer fruits and all that. And guess what? Noah, Noah got out of the ship through the door, let all the animals loose. His sons come out of the thing, their wives come out, and he plants a vineyard and gets drunk. David's in the kingdom, everything's going hunky-dory, and he takes a little walk and commits adultery and murder. What do you learn from this? Where, where do you see Jesus Christ in chapter 40? We do see him. The only way human nature is going to change is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God brings us home, when God brings the Jews home, when we get the new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, and we all have a new nature, and the heart of the Jew has been placed, the law has been placed, the heart of God into those Jews to do right and no sin. That's the only way, after all this hell and destruction and, and misery and Judgment and all that, only by God can change the human nature. By removing our sins totally, if not removing our sins, removing the sinners. And if not removing the sinners, removing the source of sin and iniquity, Satan. Satan's running around in chapter 40 and then in chapter 40. So guess what? We already learned that the judgment upon Judah... That didn't change nobody. They're still sinning. They're still lying. They're still plotting to murder. They're still rebelling against the government. So you need a judgment seat of Christ. You need a great white throne judgment. You need a place of hell. Would you really like to have would you like to have every man that's listening to the Bible that's been rebellious? Would you like to have them in heaven with you? Imagine Judas being in being in uh heaven with you. You'd be watching him out. You wouldn't trust him one step that you take with him. Looking to sell you out. Would you trust Pharaoh? Would you trust uh, 
uh, uh, the Roman government with your children in heaven? When they were throwing them in the river and they were killing them? Would you like to take your take you and your wife for a walk and meet Abraham in heaven? Or would you like to be a wife of Abraham? Here, take her. She's my sister. We are, in chapter 40 shows, we are, no matter what, we are in a sin state. And only God can remove that sin state. Until the Lord takes us home by death or rapture, rapture will definitely happen totally for us all that are saved. You're going to sin. You cannot say we are not sinners. Because uh, 1 John 1.10 says if we say we're not sinners, to the fact is we make him a liar. By the chapter 40, by the end of chapter 40, it says, you know what? No matter all the judgment of God, we are yet sinners. That's a state that you need to learn. I'm a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. 